After a month of fighting, which has killed nearly 2,000 people on both sides, a five-day extension to the latest ceasefire in Gaza is holding. As Matthew Kalman reports, the truce is bringing a glimmer of hope to the region. A shaky start to this 72-hour ceasefire with rocket attacks from Gaza and retaliatory airstrikes by the Israeli Air Force overnight. But as dawn broke over the area this morning, we did see some sort of peace, some sort of tense, quiet return to the area. And our, uh, we had an entire day now without any violence on either side. So this 72-hour truce does seem to be holding. And more than that, there seems to be some optimistic signs that this could go even further. But Facts Prime Minister Benjamin stubborn. Netanyahu is under intense pressure from uh, exactly. two sides. First of all, uh, from Iran's within his own government, from right-wingers like uh, Avigdor Lieberman, the foreign minister, saying that the Hamas government should be toppled in Gaza, even if that means an escalation of military activity. In other words, uh, a ground invasion into Gaza, which would see more destruction, claim more lives on both sides. And also a demonstration tonight, tens of thousands of Israelis who live uh, around the Gaza border and their supporters in Tel Aviv tonight demonstrating not just for a, a truce and maybe a return to a kind of war of attrition with intermittent attacks and retaliation on both sides, but they are demanding an absolute cessation of all the rocket attacks, all the mortars, uh, even if that means a military escalation by Israel in the short term. So Netanyahu is under intense pressure from his own supporters uh, to solve this crisis, but at the same time he's trying to solve it diplomatically now if he can. So intense pressure here, but a glimmer of hope for the first time in a month that we might be seeing the beginnings of a solution to this crisis. This is Matthew Kalman for CCTV in Jerusalem.